Greetings, nerds. This is Sina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Oh, very well, Sarah. Good to be back with you. Yeah, it's been uh, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. It's been, yeah, two weeks <laughs> since our last recording, but I, I know it seems like uh, August is, it seems seems to have been longer than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I got COVID for the first time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh gosh, yeah, I know, I know. I was, I was building for you, but I'm glad you're I'm glad you're doing better. Yeah, and it's it honestly the perfect timing. I mean, if I was going to get it, because I'm a hermit, so I lasted four years without getting it. But because I'm a hermit, so the so one of the very few times that I actually leave Alaska to go to the lower 48, y'all give me, I get it. But I also. I, I'm there for a good five, four days, mm-hmm. and it really hit me on the last day when I was flying home. So I'm going to apologize to all of the people in the airports that I went to where I was walking around with COVID with mask off because I didn't realize I had it at the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> did not realize. Just it felt like a really bad cold. So and and in my defense, my mom did the same thing. So so honestly, you if if you got it because you were around us blame her because i got it from her so whatever there you go. It's, it's always my it's always mom's fault <laughs> it's always mom's fault it is it is it is but but and so so then it just extended my leave from work because i can't i couldn't go in when i tested right. positive for covid so, yeah. so yeah. like like if it it would have been very bad had i got in it going down oh gosh but, yeah yeah. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm grateful for the timing. If it had to happen, it was honestly, arguably one of the better times to have occurred. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I know because you had, you had big plans on your, on your trip and, and I saw the concerts you went to and stuff, exciting times. It would have sucked if you had gotten sick on in route. So I'm glad you were able to do that. And there's a, yeah. there's a speculation. We got it from the concert. So you never know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, you know. That's probably, probably where I mean, it's, it's definitely, yeah, it's still hanging around there. It's so sort of like, the, it's kind of like the flu now. It's still, it's there, but you know, people. I yeah. will say yeah. I've had the flu. Um, Now, now this hit me bad, like in my voice and congestion. However, I'm, I don't know why, but I want to say I felt worse when I had the flu okay. because of the freaking fever, mm-hmm. that fever was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I never <laughs> felt that way. And I don't, I didn't really get too much of a fever. I maybe got high, as high as one oh one oh one, but I swear I was like at one oh six with when I had the flu, I was like yeah. I was getting out ice packs, like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one time I contracted COVID, I had that one, I guess that day and a half where I think it was where it, it just laid me out. But then after that, I was, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was probably probably about the same. It was, it was like the, the, yeah, the flu was worse because I think it was longer. But the one day that I did, when I did have COVID, it, 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 it was no joke. And, and, but, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, it, it definitely ticked up this summer. I know it was kind of, well, I had a couple, several people, I know, in addition to you that, uh, that got it, but I'm glad you're doing better. Yeah. Yeah. And I did watch some stuff while I was stuck here chilling, um, and just coughing and blowing my nose constantly. So, but I didn't watch anything like, okay. The stuff I ended up watching, have you heard about the show your honor? Yeah, yeah, I've been meaning to watch it. Don't watch it, okay? okay? Do not do this. I have no idea why everyone is, like, not everyone, but every so often through social media, mm-hmm. there's these shows that suddenly just start to kind of, like, there's there's a group of people who kind of are like, oh, you have to watch it. It's like a um a very ke- well kept secret and and i think it was originally on showtime and then yeah. got moved to netflix and now season two is on netflix and so i kept hearing it mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. i ended up watching it within the first episode i was bored because within the first episode i mean the whole premise is 
a judge's son mm -hmm. um, is involved in a hit and run. OK. Yep. yep. And but the actions of the son and the judge. Make arguably no sense to me within the first mm -hmm. episode. The 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 logic <laughs> for like their own. <laughs> I was mean, going to give the son a break. But the mm -hmm. moment the judge or Brian Cranston's character comes in and starts to assess the situation, I'm like, oh my God, really? Really? Mm -hmm. And just, I, they make decisions to mm -hmm. that obviously no one in their right mind would make. I mean, okay, okay I'm just going to spoil it because this show made me so freaking mad. The the cover up, the so Brian Cranston's character becomes aware that his son involved in hit and run kills this other kid who just so happens to be the son of a mob boss in the city. So he knows that his son will get killed if he admits to being like the perpetrator. Okay. That made sense to me. What does not make sense to me is the vehicle itself. He ends up getting a friend of his to, um, find somebody to take it to a chop shop. And then within a matter of what feels like a half of a day, mm -hmm. he tells his detective that somebody stole my car, which oh, immediately yeah. puts the cops on alert. Like, I'm like, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and because I was bored, mm -hmm. it just gets worse. Yeah. yeah. And, and don't, do not tell me season two is better because the decision I I really skimmed <laughs> season two because I just couldn't. I just yeah. could not take it anymore. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is <laughs> some of the most like I understand backing your characters into a corner and mm -hmm. then seeing how they get out. But I just can't understand that logic. Yeah. Like you, you get somebody to take the car away to dispose of it and you don't logically come up with a good timetable of when to notify the cops like that car got stolen or mm -hmm. like, uh, it's just, it was yeah. uh, so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard people talk about it and I, I'll, I had I, I attempted to start it, but yeah, I, I just, I was like, yeah, because I heard about the premise and stuff and, and, and all and about it. But uh, yeah, I may, I may, I may. After hearing you describe it, but more, I'm, I I might pass. Yeah, it, it it definitely was one where it made me mad. I finally watched Made. Um, came out a few years back. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I remember, yeah. It didn't make me cry. Um, okay. I understand why a lot of, um, especially women like that show, and it, and it's mm -hmm. good. It's good. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bit better than it turned out to be but it was made i watched emily in paris season four okay. first half because netflix loves to do that shit these days they do. um this weekend i started i started uh 2k dramas love okay. next door um which is very cute mm -hmm. and um also the frog ah. which the frog i don't know i'm only I'm only two and a quarter episodes in, and they currently have eight episodes out. I think it's probably going to be 12 to 16 episodes long. Very interesting to see what happens here. Very, mm. very. I, I don't know yet. I haven't made up my mind if it's too boring, too slow, or if it's um if it's interesting. It has me intrigued, though. Okay. Um, it's a, it's, cool. it's, I don't know how to explain it. Um. I want to say murder mystery, but not murder mystery because we know who killed. <laughs> <laughs> say, it sounds it's like not, that quite. <laughs> it, it's um, like it's a mystery, but it's not a mystery. But at the same time, there's two. They're technically telling, from what I can gather, two stories simultaneously. Okay. Um. And it's the same place. Different events. Okay. Um, but they're running parallel and I'm trying to figure out why mm. I, I made one connection. That's pretty obvious because basically we're, we're in a way, a way, not really, she's not the main character, but objectively 
she's the link because you have someone at the start of her career on a murder case and someone at the end and then we meet her in the future okay but hmm. but it's 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 a very it's a bit complicated but it's called frog i'm i'm curious about it so i'll i'll update you guys yeah. as i make my way through that um unless i yeah. give up on it because man we're gonna get into this and you already mentioned the acolyte which r.i.p season two or any yeah. seasons to come because yeah. what you watched it okay yeah. i have yeah. yet to finish it but yeah. are, did you could you understand why it cost them what was it 170 million dollars to make that show yeah um <laughs> it must have been all that Carrie Ham also salary, to be honest. <laughs> I had that same thought. I was just like, there's no we, way. <laughs> because we because yeah, because we, we watched the first episodes together and then of course you know, and then we, we had our we, we, June happened well it happened it started in June as well, but the, the you know, it was sort of the uh uh Luke the appetizer before the main event and uh, the main course and um yeah, you know, I, you know, and I, I did watch all seven, eight episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, see how much of an impression it made on me. <laughs> um, uh, and it was so. I was, I, you know, I was not surprised, especially after we didn't hear anything about it at D twenty three that it was going to that about a renewal so once 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 it, we got through d23 a couple of weeks ago i guess it was like I, I guess i guess it was the weekend after we finished our last recording um and it didn't get renewed i was like oh okay you know so I, either i was like either it didn't probably still try to decide or it's sort of like ahsoka you know we'll just get maybe a soft renewal you know uh because of all the all the discourse that was going on about that show but mm -hmm. uh but uh i mean it had it had potential and it had interesting themes throughout it that i thought that that in the fights were probably some of the best fights i've seen in star wars i will i, I cannot and the choreography there the fight choreography the lightsaber choreography definitely some of the best that I've seen in Star Wars. I cannot, I cannot uh, knock that. But the, you know, but I think was it the second or third episode? I think we made it to what three episodes together, and and it was the whole witches singing and stuff. And at that point, you were just like, you you, you bailed and and you know because we like I said we went to the main main course. But I I I think I messaged you. It was probably good. I, it was good that we did not cover it together because we would have. It would just been a frustrating watch for both of us. I mean, I did, I did uh, do some reviews with uh, our friends over at A Plus, and um, but um, you know, every week it was like picking out. I, it became repetitious for me, uh, sort of like with the Flash <laughs> down the line. Whenever we were like on the tail ends of our reviews of that show, where it was like great ideas, but execution sucks. <laughs> right. Uh, which, yeah, and I just, but I can't see it, where the money went. I mean, I yeah, really can't. Yeah, that, that freaking, that price tag, my yeah. God. Yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 and quite frankly, yeah, I mean, you, after those first episodes, um, I, 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 you know, I see why, the, it, just being objective, I mean, it just wasn't enough there to keep people interested and i know there's all the other discourse about the trolls and the you know the you know, neck beards and whatnot and and all but i mean i think that is giving them way too much credit quite frankly i think the truth of the matter is that um with a lot of these shows because i mean we both were you know uh, even like with Ahsoka stuff and, and Obi Wan and some other shows, I mean, we both have been very critical of some of the content come out of Star Wars recently, other than maybe Andor, because even even Mandalorian season three, we weren't like, you know, we 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 it was it was a slog to get through. Yeah, yeah, I don't even remember really what happened yeah. in season three. Yeah, so yeah, so um, yeah, so I mean, that's you know, as far as a I guess hot news topic of, of late that's uh that's where my thoughts on, on the acolyte there 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we but, had a pre-show discussion yeah. about about this yeah. <laughs> this topic of like your mid-year grade for TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, which at first he had talked me down because he's like, you don't have to grade every single show, and I'm like, good, <laughs> good, thank God. Better. Um, so did did you did you have a show in particular, or I mean, what what is overall well, your grade for TV? So. This year, you know, as I was sitting here listing all the things that we've covered so far, um, yeah, no surprise, my favorite one out of the gate um, was, was Shogun. Um, mm-hmm. I th- that, you know, I think, uh, and um, and interestingly enough, as I was like sort of thinking through all the things we've covered and things that really left an impression with me, um, I have to say that Fallout. Is 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 going up on the met on the met on the meter mm. for me. Um, I mean, I thought the boys was good. I think it, you know, it, it started strong, it ended strong. That middle was, uh, you know, I think the subtlety and it, it was just way too on the nose. And especially as we get deeper in election year and stuff, it just like, man, that show just was like, you know, what made that show great those earlier seasons was just like how it did the, the satire and, 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 and the subtlety that I think was, it was, it was less of a blunt instrument than it was this year. Mm-hmm. I think that, and I think that took away from the show, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I always enjoy watching the boys during like while I'm in it mm-hmm. and arguably I only ever reference it later on when I'm talking about acting or satire mm-hmm. so the the seasons I never really I, I would never really rank high on anything just because I never I don't I don't spend my time thinking about the boys because I honestly I don't want those images in my mind yeah <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. Like in the moment, overall arcing story and and character growth and just Anthony Starr having so much fun on screen in that role, um, as as horrible as a person as Homelander is, it's just it's very it's it's very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. but but yeah, I would I I I, I don't. I often, whenever I think about TV shows, it's it goes back to what you said at the start. It's like what had an impact on me, and I started thinking about it. So I'm going to just jump ahead to my overall grade because um, as soon as you pose the question, and I'm going to be completely honest, I was thinking about maybe grading on a curb, but then I'm like, no, because I think listeners have even heard me say this prior to this conversation mm-hmm. tonight it's a c um mm-hmm. nothing is standing out to me i'm forgetting yeah. about everything i don't think about these shows after i watch them house of dragon should have been hit me harder it did not hit me at all mm-hmm. um i kind of forgot it happened <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. um and man greg miller um from kind of funny posted some something on kind of funny's channel um and uh their youtube channel and it was it was uh why season three of the bear sucks <laughs> and i'm like thank you and he said he said i mean before you write it off will he said oh. tina's episode was the best episode <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm well. Hey, well, I feel I feel uh, vindicated there that yeah. uh, you know that a big channel like you know had the same villain that I had. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and I listened to most of it, and he talked about all the points that we talked about. Like mm-hmm. the most frustrating thing about that season is it nothing happens. Yeah. No, it's it feels like you're just standing still, and by the end of the season, you feel like you're still in the freezer, which. I don't know. Like, I kind of feel like House of Dragon did something similar because it feels like a continuation of a cliffhanger from season one. But mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. But it's just frustrating for me. Um, I forgot fall- Fallout happened. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's just and I just I know that a lot of these things 
have been good, like Shogun, Killer Paradox. I forgot about that show. Um, what else? House of Dragon, The Boys, The Bear. But I also, uh, nothing's really sticking out to me where I feel like last year, yeah. towards the end of the year, I kept referencing or shows that I'd seen earlier in the year. I kept going back to it, making comparisons. Things really hit me a lot more uh, last year than they are this year. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, we talked about this with the strike, you know, back last year, we were wondering how, how, how the strike was going to impact these shows. And we clearly saw like with House of the Dragon, for example, where the strike definitely like not only did it impact the show as far as like i think the writing i mean it was to me i mean i still for me house of the dragon sticks out to me and i know it's still re- maybe a little bit of recency bias but uh but at the same time i think you know they, they were in the middle of production when when the strike happened and mm-hmm. between that and then also just hbo well, well, I guess Warner Brothers Discovery cutting their butt, you know, tighten up the rings as far as the budget and stuff. They cut their episode count from 10 to 8. So it just, you know, so we saw some some of the impacts there. Um, one one that does stand, another one that does stand out for me was uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that was one that I really uh, did, really, really, really did enjoy. Um, Killer Paradox was one that you shared with me that, that, um, that was one I, I was that hit that was unexpected for me that I liked it as much as I that, that I did because um, I know that was something that we talked about earlier in the year. Um, but uh, yeah, but speaking of shows, I, I think I, I I know before we we had a little chat after uh, things to possibly watch over our break, and uh, so speaking of House of the Dragon, so Sarah, I did it. I started Game of Thrones. You started it. <laughs> Yes, I finally did. I finally did. That was how, what I how did. How many episodes are you in? I've gotten uh, four episodes in the first season. I'm just taking my time. I'm not going to, you know, I got. I figured I got I got plenty of time to you watch. Are, you already know, like, the big points. I know the big points, but yeah. now, but yeah, but, uh, but yeah, but it's just now, even though I know those mo- certain things were going to happen, it's still, just still watching it, actually seeing it. Uh-huh. I was I see I was like God I was like damn I missed you know I I yeah. have like that yeah I just like man I wish if like I could like have a TV thing. time machine and just be able to experience that like when everybody else did for the first time oh, because yeah. I see why especially that first those early episodes of the first season I see why the show it, 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 it is what it is and why it just became you know such so popular and it's like ice and stuff because it, well, it definitely yeah 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 I missed the first two seasons yeah 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 i and then i played it played catch up um yeah. from there because i kept hearing things and honestly i don't really re- remember being that too keen on it initially mm-hmm. it grew on me um i just remember <laughs> specifically like peter dinklage yeah like, that's <laughs> yes that's that's really what stands out to me it's, oh, it's, 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 yeah, because I mean those first couple episodes are, you know, just trying to get used to Ned Stark and the whole, you know, and everything. It's like it, it is a little bit of a slow burn, I, you know. But oh yeah, it, it they got a they got a lot to do yeah, yeah. in that first because you're talking you're talking a world and we're not talking one one um incestuous family family. We're talking like five or six, yeah, and, yeah. and it just continues to grow and all of the stuff. But but yeah yeah. You, you definitely are going to get your, um, I'll say the the ice side of things yeah. um, from the Game of Thrones. Well, with House of Dragon, you're getting the fire side. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just I just wanted to share that with you. I I, I was waiting to like share that with you here tonight. I didn't. That's why I didn't message you over, or text you over to break. I was like, I would I want to talk with you. Actually, talk with you about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm. Yeah. I've I've been kind of every now and then TikTok rec- like on my for you stuff. They they pull up a clip from House of Dre or from Game of Thrones, and I've actually been rewatching clips of Succession recently mm. as a mm. massive 
least. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so so I guess uh, your overall grade is an A, B? Um, well, um, for the year, I would say it's a, so far, I would say it's probably a B. Okay. Because, yeah, because, I mean, there are some stinkers. I mean, Avatar, The Last Airbender, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> mm. e Echo, I mean, you know, it, it had potential. Uh, Reacher was another one that was, it was okay. Now, you know, it, it was one of those, it was like popcorn movie for TV show for me. You know, it was just like, so, you know, solid, but, you know, watch it and, and, and move on. Like, like you said, doesn't like. Nothing moves the needle, like you said. I mean, other really the only thing that the two shows that moved the needle for me this year are Shogun and House of the Dragon. Everything else is sort of like, okay, it's there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even X Men '97, as much as well done as it was, it still doesn't. It's it's like in that next level. It's in that next tier with with uh, maybe uh, with Mister and Mrs. Smith. Right. Right. And we got we got Penguin and Agatha all along coming up next. Yep, next, next month. Next month, month, yeah. It's gonna be yep. a, a few weeks of scraping to try to figure out what to talk. About. <laughs> I recommend a Supercell. I know I saw a few people. It's like a British uh, sci-fi show that's out there, original content. So maybe it could be our it could be it could be our like one piece this year where we like. Hmm? What is it on? Netflix. Netflix. And it's only one season? Uh, I actually just got renewed for a second season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it got renewed, but only one season is out. Yeah, so right. far. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That, that's great. Yeah, okay. six episodes. So, yeah. yeah we, can, we can try that. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so, so we're going to talk about Cobra Kai for like five minutes. Um, <laughs> season six, they, they decided to... So, so it was five episodes now, and it's five episodes in November. Yep, and then okay. another five, some point next year, to close this out. Oh, oh, there's another five. Yeah, fifteen total for the final season. Yeah. Fifteen total. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. I was so confused because yeah. these first five episodes are literally just about trying to figure out. Who is going to represent Miyagi Do in the Sagatai tournament, mm -hmm. which they get to at the very end? And so I'm like, wait a second. So are you telling me that the next five episodes are just going to be the tournament? Like they're going to stretch the tournament tournament out by five episodes? But now Will's telling me, no, 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 no. There's more. <laughs> well, I think the budget. Well, it is Netflix, so their but you know budget issues are are not a problem there on that streaming platform because oh. they yeah. so they can, they can stretch they can stretch it out for ten. <laughs> you would have me fooled because man, I don't know. I don't. The they probably make this show for five dollars for all I know. Like, yeah, yeah. but like, it is not. <laughs> you yeah. don't. Need I assume that they're going to yeah, but I think I did read where they actually did film part of the season in Barcelona so well well that's that's great it still yeah. looks like an after school special True. um yeah. so so yeah yeah it <laughs> Cobra Kai is never going to be Cobra Kai season one like yeah. season one season two season three it just goes downhill um yeah I just the it the the uh yeah, uh, Chris. Like, yeah. is it gonna take them fifteen episodes to get him back in jail? Is that what you're trying to tell me? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the Chris stuff. It, I mean, I will. It, the show just for me just grinds to a halt anytime they go back to him. Um, and that was the second episode where he w was in Korea, which I'm like, okay, now uh, he escaped from jail. I mean. You got to suspend disbelief multiple times that he's like oh, me globe hopping, hop, hopping like that because he's going to go to Korea and then he's going to go to Spain. I mean, I mean, it's just like, OK, what? But anyway, um, I, I felt that that speaking of after school specials and stuff, that was so like just the whole quest in the cave. I just was like, 
I, you know, I was just like, okay, this is like Dollar Story and Fire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker moment. Um, whenever Kreese was going in there with the Cobra and uh, trying to retrieve the knife and stuff. I mean, that, the, the, that, I was, you know, I, that stuff just, it drove me nuts as far as just like watching. I was like, okay, I was like, eh, let me just, I just started like scrolling my phone with that. Right. I, right. Yeah. I will say though, it, I actually, even with all the problems with this show, but then the main the main one is they, it's just gone on too long because really after they had to wrap up with silver and everything last season I think that was it. I mean, where whenever you're like trying to create, you know, whatever whatever they're trying to manufacture drama, like with Johnny trying to get the girls to fight just to get their edge back and stuff, then you know if you you know you've gone too long. But uh, but it's still entertaining. I mean, I, actually I benched it all Sunday. <laughs> actually, kind of it was like I, I wasn't like mad after i finished benching and i was like oh yeah it's you know it's a fun tv you know blunt, ma- fun mountainous tv for a sunday afternoon <laughs> yeah i benched it all on on sunday afternoon because i knew i had to talk to you yeah. about it <laughs> not because <laughs> i wanted to yeah um it didn't make me mad i i knew what to expect i yeah. like there was like i i know what i'm getting into by this point i know what i'm getting into mm-hmm. <laughs> my so my expectations arguably are low so, so they, they, in a way, they meet my expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not expecting, yeah. <laughs> I expect this. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. It's just annoying. There's just so many annoying. Um, something that stuck out to me throughout all the episodes was just how I find it very interesting how initially the, the rivalry was between Robbie and Miguel. Mm-hmm. And that was carried arguably the first two seasons because you had you had them being rivals um, for for love. And then you had them also with Johnny as Robbie's actual dad and Miguel mm-hmm. viewing Johnny as a father figure. Yeah, they have put that on the like they have done away with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even try to do anything reuniting it was just all about um who do i hate mary or uh Nick? yeah uh tori and um no uh, and, one. Huh? who's who's danny's daughter what's it? sam sam yeah it was all about sam and tori and their rivalry which kind of cooled off but but i'm like tori sam is just annoying whenever she talks i'm sorry i really just don't like sam I, know. Um, I thought about that. I was and, I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you, they, they have a scene, which it's funny because you mentioned like how Chris goes back to Korea. I honestly thought he was still in the Valley. Okay. I'm going to put that right now. Thought he was still h- hiding out in the woods in the Valley because he just randomly is able to come back to the States yeah. and, and have this one-on-one conversation with, to- with Tori right before her mother dies and mm-hmm. then that leads her to like remember um danny's always gonna place his his child before before you well like that's his kid but yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it's just this weird like and then of course she's gonna show up at the end like yeah. on the other team so so i it's it's so predictable yeah. and so annoying but I just, I want to, like, if I had a question for the writers, it would be at, like, at what point did you decide that the boys' rivalry, which arguably I appreciated just for the fact of how it involved Johnny, mm-hmm. um, from the from the perspective of not really being in Robbie's life, getting a second chance with Miguel and now getting the second chance with Robbie. Like, like that was very complicated and interesting. It was. This whole girl fight drama though. Oh my God. You're, you're having to kill moms and there is no substitute mom. Like, like here's a prediction by the end of the final season, uh, the Lurosos are going to adopt Sam or no, not adopt Sam, Tori. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's well, yeah. Well, I mean, because yeah, because because 
that's not a bad theory because she was she did have little russo's listed as a contact because i mean it was you know miss yeah. russo that uh got the phone call from the hospital um which yeah and that whole scene i mean i don't know it just it just felt <laughs> it was the editing on that i know exactly what you're talking about yeah it's so poorly edited because i feel like da- like she gets the call she right. realizes then she tells danny you have to stop the fight and then i swear to god at least three minutes goes on before he actually stops the fight he stops the fight and then also just the character choices that at that point with johnny it's just like i i i don't feel like anything was earned in that moment or him like regressing to like you know because they they make all this effort to like make him you know miyagi do and balance and all that kind of stuff and and then he just like it's like no no fuck no go let's let's fight it let's finish this now fight it out fight it out and i'm like no this is just it's just the whole the whole the whole thing just like just just played this terribly for me yeah they have a they have a very hard time uh the writers do with growing these characters but also keeping the conflict like um there yeah um, and, and they initially, arguably, hey, I'm going to say something nice. They did a decent job for, like, the first few episodes. It's just the sense, like, clearly, like, the fact that the old dojo got torn down. And yeah. mm-hmm. and that's something that arguably excited Danny. But at the same time, it meant something different for Johnny. Um, right. And so and so that was good. Even his his um, Johnny getting getting into it with um, Chosen 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah 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 which was which may again makes sense but I mean for 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 it to really to your point for it to really be make sense in terms of his character. We have to have like have had a moment earlier in the season or previous seasons where where Johnny explains how he's dealt with grief through mm-hmm. fighting and all of this stuff. And then and then you can see like why he decides to take Tori's side. But but like like that doesn't make sense. It would make more sense if you swap Tori with Robbie like that's yeah. just, like but it's just it's just. I I can understand, like like I knew how it was gonna play out, um, but it's just and it's not frustrating. It's just annoying. Like mm-hmm. like come on, well, because I mean to your point, it's still the show isn't as long as Johnny's there being Johnny. Yeah, he he keeps me engaged. Like if he, he removed if Johnny wasn't in this like these five episodes i would have probably texted you around the first half of the first episode and been like i can't do it (laughs) (laughs) i can't give me out (laughs) yeah (laughs) what else what else do we want to talk about this week (laughs) yeah Yeah, we need something else (laughs) because i can't do it (laughs) i completely agree i completely agree and it's just like yeah i mean william zabka he just this and I guess that's the thing too. It's just like, you know, like whenever Stingray was trying to lure him back into Cobra Kai with the, you know, making it seem like Kreese was the one, you know, you know, going back to that spot in the woods and stuff. And then Johnny's like, no, I put Cobra Kai behind me, and, and by extension of that eagle thing as well, because that's just an extension of what Cobra Kai was. I mean, so it's just so you know, so they're doing all these great moments. You know, they you know they try to like I, I, again i think part of the problem with this with with this season is the big 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 conflicts all got wrapped up at the end of season five especially with terry silver being arrested yeah. i mean and so at this point it's just like okay the big drama the first part of this season is just like okay now where are the kids going to go to college where you know and they and they try to manufacture some stuff with kenny and his brother and, and robbie but even at that kenny's brother's like no look 
go back to the dojo because yeah. they they're onto something here. So all you know, so you know, so all the things that are happening, and and, and of course, you know, and it feels like it's just wash, rinse, repeat with like Dimitri and Hawk and their conflicts. I mean, now you know, they just this time they just centered it around Hawk not applying to MIT. I mean, it's, so it's just. Like I said earlier, I just think the show has just reached a point where it has gone as far as it can go and it just needs to end, which it is. Yeah, and they keep. I wouldn't be surprised, especially based on how the the episode two went, how if they like Chris is going to end up back in jail. Don't get Mm -hmm. me wrong, but there is going to be a redemption. Yeah, they're going to try for it because. Apparently everyone but Silver, wait, which, I mean, there is like 15 episodes, so Silver might get out eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But I think overall, what they, what they, what they have not established and why the writing has continued to go downhill is a clear villain. Mm-hmm. They keep yeah. redeeming the villains or they keep. I mean, they should make Danny the villain. <laughs> yeah, maybe like, I, well, like, and I guess that's maybe maybe that's what they're trying to do with Miyagi this season. And even though, you know, and again, that's and nobody, even if that, nobody really. I'm gonna just say nobody really cares about that. <laughs> I well, just, I feel it, like if if you got on board with Cobra Kai, okay, first season. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, I understand who Danny is. Very relevant. Yes, central character, lead, hero, blah, blah, blah. But what really sucked you in was starting to understand the story through Johnny's perspective. Yeah. yeah. And then to also still have him be Johnny, yet try to be a better version of him through mm-hmm. the guidance of Danny. I just... Miyagi is very important, but at the same time, I do, I feel like you're trying to have a whole Miyagi storyline f- flesh out in like a later season. Like, what a yeah. what about more dealing with with going back to like where it started, which is for Cobra Kai is with Johnny. Yeah, well, I mean. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, that's that's a very good point, and yeah, you're right. I mean, I think the Miyagi story, especially, doesn't doesn't work as far as a. It's just a MacGuffin for you know again the, the, the manufactured drama, yep. because at the end of the day, they're not especially with Ralph Macchio. Even the episode that he you know he directed, I think that third episode where they find the mystery box, and and the article and stuff. I mean. They'll tease the deconstruction of our hero, but at the end of the day, they're already starting to show like with the with the with the fact that he competed in the competitions whenever he was younger and stuff. Why you know they're already doing the escape hatch to to basically not deconstruct and not tear down our hero here, even though they're trying to tease it. We know at the end of the day they're not going to do it because they're not going to dishonor the memory of of Pat Morita that way. Right. Right. Or Miyagi, yeah. I mean Miyagi. I'm sorry, I meant to I meant name the actor, but you know, but Miyagi that way. They're not. They're just not going to do it. I mean, it's just they'll tease it, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. it's just sort of like, all right, yeah. So you're right. It is again. It's predictable. Yeah, but, and it's just it's just to try to keep Danny relevant, especially when in the first episode he basically looks at the camera and says, "This is my swan song." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I and now I'm looking into the camera saying, why why does it have to be for 15 episodes long? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah. what? Yeah, Our that, new, could have been five episodes. Okay, come on. Yeah, yeah. When Netflix finally decides to like break stuff up, they 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 have a, a they have a weird way. This is one of those situations where it's okay to like let it be the full 15 all at once because <laughs> the way the story is stru- the structure. It, this is the this is the this is the story where binging works. <laughs> I you know I mentioned before I watched the first five episodes of season four or five of Emily in Paris. I felt the same way. I was like, what 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 is this? This yeah. <laughs> first of all, it's so incomplete, 
yeah. then it just gives you more time to reflect on some of like the weird choices these characters are making <laughs> yeah just to go back to the earlier conversation whereas disney having problems trying to like you know in you know i guess both it's funny with these streaming platforms trying to see them try to do old-fashioned linear television they just can't figure it out because the whole the whole construct of that the streaming platforms is is at its core was the the binge model so now they're trying to like put that back in, you know, try to do this bench model, but with this modified linear model, it just becomes a, a complete cluster. Right. But that is because what they don't recognize is that the linear structure that was written in a way. Yeah. Like the episodes could stand alone for a week at a time mm -hmm. while the way netflix in particular because they started off like re with especially with their original series were were f because people go there to binge the first season yeah and they those episodes every like it makes no sense to break those up because mm -hmm. it's like it was written in a way that you would watch it by binging it yeah. um i was thinking about this earlier today because i've been um I think they've been on for about four months now. Um, Sterling K. Brown, Mandy Moore, and um, I forget. I'm so, I'm going to apologize, but Chris something. Um, all from This Is Us. Oh, yeah. um, they are doing a rewatch podcast of This okay. Is Us. Been mm -hmm. doing it for weeks now, watching, bringing on people who've been on it. Very, very good, very entertaining. Um, and they even brought it up. They're like, this arguably, this was us, was the last show that is like traditional television week to week yeah. watching. Mm -hmm. um, and especially on a network. I'm going to yeah. classify that because, yeah, House of Dragon was week to week. Yeah. But. But it's it's just but it was also those episodes are written in that way. Like those are consolidated hour long things of TV that, yes, connect, but not in a way where it's like, let me just binge all of season one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, OK, you can. But it's also like. They knew like, oh, we're going to have a two week break because of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So we're going to leave you with a cliffhanger or we're going to leave with a cliffhanger just because we want you talking about the show um, for the next week. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyways, I just I feel like. They they did not they did not realize that the impact of binge TV watching would have on just how in general TV is formatted and written. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. And so, yeah. So now, yeah. So now we, we you know, we get the, these five blocks of three blocks of five uh, with, with, with Cobra Kai. And um, I will be interested to see like how, how long they stretch this tournament out. I mean, it, will, the, will the tournament just be this next, the next, five episodes and then i guess the the back five will be like like you said maybe it is the redemption story for crease after after um after this whole tournament and um because everyone else at this point has had their their turn even 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 mike barnes um you know he's now been re redeemed so basically all that's left is for crease to turn good and for uh hillary swank's character to show up even though she even though i think her character is not I think the only thing that ties her to the rest of them is just Miyagi. Right. Yeah. Right. Which that's not a bad tie to have. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad tie to have. Yeah, exactly. And you know, keeping with keeping with the uh, themes of the movies. I mean, she was in the sixth movie, so and it's the sixth season. So here we go. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as, as Twitter, at Will and Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. 
And you can follow me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at scene underscore n underscore nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.